in Ukraine. Well, they got the funding they've been asking for. I don't know, it's, it's it's 60, 61 billion dollars. Put a B after it. Either way, I know a lot of people, I think me included, a little jaded, cynical, and skeptical that this is actually going to help. So where are you on the approval of funding and where are you in terms of strategy as we look at Ukraine and the war with Russia? The first thing you got to do is is drill down into the details. What the 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 absolute thing that matters the most is what is this actually going to do on the ground? I don't care what it does on the headlines. It only matters what it does on the ground, on the battlefield, on this six hundred mile front line in Ukraine. If you can't draw a straight line from this this aid package that was done down to the men at the front in the tactical level and show how it can offset the advantages that Russia has right now, which is leading them to a, a methodical move to the West, then you have to say, well, it's it's just meaningless. And that's exactly what this is. When you, when you look especially $60 billion, it sounds like a big number, kind of in isolation, but even when you look at that in comparison to the previous uh, two years where it was over $200 billion between the U.S. and the Western Europe, uh, and, and thousands upon thousands of armored vehicles, uh, air defense systems, artillery, air, uh, uh, armored personnel carriers, drones, I mean, everything you can imagine, and it didn't dent the line. When, when they put all that into an offensive, it didn't even dent Russia's line, and now it's only stronger than it was. Now that we're talking $60 billion, but we're not really talking $60 billion. We're talking about, at least on the surface, $13.8 billion. That's all of that money that's going directly to Ukraine for ammunition, weapons, and all that kind of stuff. Very small number. Where's the rest of it going? According to Secretary of Defense Austin, who bragged about it in a statement, $50 billion of that is going to U.S. defense contractors and U.S. organizations to make money for American jobs. Straight up, he said that. I've, I actually had it on my show yesterday. Military industrial complex is immediately what comes to mind. But think about it. Money, you can't throw money at the Russians and make them go away. Dollars do not fight war. Bullets, bombs, rockets, things that kill people and break things. That's what that's what you fight a war with. So do we I mean, do we currently have the munitions? Because I keep hearing how we're running out of 155 millimeter shells. We don't have this, we don't have that. Our shipping production's down. We aren't making enough subs to compete with, compete with the Chinese. Is that what that money is all about to reinforce and rebuild America's supplies? Yeah, on Fox News Sunday uh, this past week, uh, Senator Blumenthal and, and Lindsey Graham took issue with one of their colleagues, uh, J.D. Vance, who had a piece in the New York Times last week that said it's a capacity issue. It doesn't even matter how much money you throw at it because we physically don't have the capacity, the 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 uh, ability to make on 155 miller rounds to scale the, what's necessary we're doing the best we can and we're expanding over time but even by the end of 2025 it still won't be about a third of what ukraine says it needs on a daily basis a third in almost a year and a half from now so you see that everybody's cheering you saw all those flags waving on the house of representatives but they don't know that it doesn't matter how many dollars because as you say you can't put dollars in the barrel of a gun and fire them at the right. enemy you've got to have something that it buys and right now we don't have the capacity to give them even anywhere near what they need. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, we don't have the facilities to ramp up or we're not there yet. But what does the annual military bill of 800 plus billion dollars go for then? Is it just the, <laughs> really the maintenance and upkeep of what we've got in our military personnel? What, I, I, I'm just at a loss to, to figure yeah. out how it works, Daniel. I have worked, when I was on active duty, I worked in the future combat systems. It, well, what was at the time in the mid-2000s, the premier of future combat uh, program that was going to launch us into the future and uh, pr produce all these you know, high-tech, new, modern weapons, whatever. We spent billions and billions of dollars on this, and it totally flopped, and for very predictable reasons. But that's common. How many times have you heard this weapon system in the Army, the Air Force, the Navy? It just completely bombs. We put so much money in so many high-tech things, like the F-35, the DDG-1000 uh, destroyer. Uh, you, you pick it. There's stuff all over the place. We keep putting all this money in, and these really high price per unit items. Uh, but we don't put the our our money in the quote blocking and tackling the basic things like ammunition production or a weapons production for interceptor missiles for air defense for example. Only now are we getting into the drones. So the things that you need on a you know a baseline how to sustain combat we don't put any money in there. 
We put it in all these other issues. And of course, a lot of that goes into the defense industrial complex on areas that are in useful, but not decisive on battlefields as we're seeing play out right now. So who is responsible for selecting these contractors to go after these sort of pie in the sky, if I may put it lightly, projects that sometimes quite, or quite often don't work out? Are they listening to politicians and the lobbyists and the, and the military industrial complex manufacturers? Or are they talking to folks who are actually serving in the military and know what the needs are and the real-time issues now? Well, here's here's the problem. I mean, this is exactly what uh, President Eisenhower warned about, you know, in his famous military industrial complex. It's military industrial congressional complex uh, <laughs> because the, the people at the top of the of Congress, especially in these uh, uh, committees like the armed services committees in both chambers, uh, the appropriations committees, they are highly funded by the defense contractors themselves. They are lobbied by the millions of dollars every year. They put them into their campaign funds every single year. And, and the, the generals, the people who get to be generals who give this advice at, at those committee hearings are guys who are in their pocket. I mean, we just have to be honest about it. Is You can't become a general in today's world, Army, unless you're political and you play the game. I saw it my whole career as I came up. I watched great guys who were not playing the game, who were doing what's right and just telling the truth, get sidelined because they don't want to hear that. They only want to hear what people desire for them to hear. And you see, this is the result. Daniel Davis, it's always a pleasure. I wish we could talk longer. I have another guest in the following segment, so I'm going to have to stop us now. But appreciate you shedding the bright light of truth on this issue. And uh, I I don't know what's going to happen, but I, it doesn't appear as if this money is going to be immediately converted into weaponry, which could be used by the Ukrainians, whether or not they're capable of fighting the battle. 